Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Well, it's almost the new year, which means that brokers are about to do what? Get lazy. So make sure to book your loads on Thursday, December 30th to take you through the weekend so that you don't get stuck like I did with our dry van right before Christmas. So today's video will be all about equipment and how certain truck and trailer specs can expand your earning potential and potentially save you money. Ready? Let's go. So before we start, I want to clarify one thing. In this video, I will only be focusing on semi trucks and trailers. So no box trucks, no hot shots. Why? Because you don't know anything about other equipment types, you loser? Yep, that's precisely it. I like to talk about things from my own personal experience and that way I know that the information is solid. Okay, let's start with the two main truck types. First, there's the day cab, which is designed for short runs. These are usually the truck of choice for those carriers that operate locally. Then there is the sleeper cab, which as you probably guessed from the name, has a place for the driver to actually sleep. Now sleeper cabs, unlike dry vans, are designed to run regionally or over the road, meaning from state to state to state. Sleeper cabs might be more expensive than day cabs, but they're also more common among carriers. Why? Because they give you some freedom. On a sleeper cab, you can run both regionally over the road or locally, Whereas in a day cab, you're sort of limited to those local runs only. But wait, can't I just get a day cab and sleep in the driver's seat? You know, pick my feet back and everything and then run interstate? I mean, I don't mind. Technically, yes, you could run long distances in a day cab. But when it comes to sleeping in the driver's seat to get your 10 hours of rest, I really don't recommend that. Most day cab operators who run interstate are forced to look for a hotel to stay at for every night they're away from home. This is because DOT officers can put you out of service unless you provide proof that you slept in a reasonable place for a reasonable amount of time. Now let's talk about aerodynamics. Every truck manufacturer has their own aerodynamics package to choose from, but basically all these additional specs like wheel covers, extenders, aerodynamic bumpers, and so on, are supposed to save you money by improving your fuel economy. How much are we actually talking about? Well, it's about a 1% improvement in fuel economy for every 2% reduction in aerodynamic drag. Do we have aerodynamics on our truck? Yes. Does it improve our fuel economy? I have no idea. Okay, so now let's talk about some trailers. The trailer that you decide to buy will have a direct effect on what kind of loads you can book. Now I'm not going to use the time of this video to explain the differences between dry vans, reefers, flatbeds, low boys, car haulers, and so on, but I am happy to make a video on that later on if you guys are interested. For the purpose of this video, we're just going to be looking at trailer specs that affect your load booking capabilities. First, there is the age of the trailer. Now, something that you will really quickly learn in this business is that many brokers will actually not give you loads if your trailer is over 10 years old. The other thing to look out for is the trailer makeup or what it's built out of. Now, there are steel trailers and then there are aluminum trailers. Steel trailers weigh approximately 10 to 15 percent more than aluminum trailers, which means that with an aluminum trailer, you can actually legally transport more cargo or heavier cargo than if you were to have a steel trailer. Next is the trailer door. Now trailers come with either a roll-up door which goes up and down or a swing door which opens in the middle. Now from my experience, brokers and shippers most of the time require a trailer that has swing doors which open in the middle and will actually not give you a load if your trailer has a roll-up door. Then there is air ride. Now this is something that is not required by all brokers or for all commodities, but certain commodities do require it. For example, if you're transporting a load of glass bottles, Air Ride will actually help you transport that load safely and in one piece to the receiver. Because instead of the cargo doing this on a bumpy road,
air suspension will provide a smoother ride for that cargo of yours. Now let's talk about the securement of cargo. 100% of the brokers and shippers you work with will require that you secure their cargo, and there are several ways to do that. On flatbeds, you would use straps and tarps to secure that freight. In an enclosed trailer like a dry van or reefer, you have several options. You can use straps, you can use load bars, or you can use load locks. Now I mentioned this in another video of mine, but I'm going to repeat it here as well. It would be very beneficial to you to secure that freight with load locks, not load bars, load locks. Why? Because load locks don't move and don't fall off. But in order to secure your freight with load locks, you need a special e-track installed on the walls of your trailer. Most new dry vans come with vertical e-tracks along the trailer walls, but reefers do not. So for reefers, it would be a good idea to install horizontal e-tracks along the trailer wall. Then there's the roof of the trailer. For reefers, most brokers will require that you have an air chute so that the airflow is evenly distributed within the trailer. For dry vans, there are aluminum roofs or translucent fiberglass roofs. Go for the aluminum roof trailer because more loads go on that type of equipment. Finding a load for a translucent roof trailer can be quite difficult. Then there's the flatbed where the roof must be Seriously? Oh, that's right. There is no roof on the flatbed. Idiot. Then there's also the walls of the trailer. There are plywood trailers, there are sheet and post trailers, and then there are plate trailers. Plywood trailers, for example, have wooden walls and many shippers will actually not load that type of trailer because of fear of contamination. Sheet and post trailers look pretty similar to plate trailers, but the width of the opening is a little bit narrower than that of a plate trailer. Now, from my short experience with dry vans, I see that a lot of brokers are requiring those plate trailers. So I would recommend to get the plate trailer just for versatility. Now there are a ton of other specs as well, duct floors, bulkheads, lift gates, and so on. But those are not as crucial to your business as the ones that I mentioned before in this video. The point is when you're actually buying your trailer, make sure to ask as many questions as possible to understand all those specs that your trailer will have. I hope you guys found this video helpful and that you learned something new and I'll see you in the next video.